Okay, if you want to calculate how much energy is required to change the state of a substance, as in other words, these stages here, without changing the temperature, then we use a specific latent heat. In this case, for fusion, it's the energy needed to change the state of a unit mass from solid to liquid without changing the temperature. Okay, you can also use it for liquid to solid as well. So instead of energy being uh, absorbed by the substance as it goes this way, energy will be released as it goes from liquid to solid. Okay, the equation is e equals L delta M. There's another one for, um, for turning from a liquid to a gas or gas to liquid. Um, it's the vaporization one, which is the energy needed per unit mass to change the state from liquid to gas without change in temperature. Okay, so here we have a setup that can be used to determine the specific latent uh, heat of fusion of ice. So the ice here is already at zero degrees. So any energy that's supplied to it will cause it to start melting. Okay, so it was an empty beaker first and then you can see you've got 97 grams of um, water that was collected after it was left on the heater was left on for one minute so I'm going to, I'm going to calculate the energy supplied by the immersion heater so power times time so 500 watts times 60 seconds one minute that gives us an energy of 30,000 joules all of this energy is going to go into increase the internal energy of the substance which is in this case is going to not change the temperature but cause it to melt. So we're going to use a latent heat equation where the energy is going to go completely into melting it. We know the mass, but we need to turn that into kilograms. So we get 30,000 divided by the mass, which is 0 0.097, and that gives us a latent heat of fusion of. 39 to 3 signal figures, 309 joules per kilogram. Guess how much energy is required per kilogram to melt it. Um, state the assumption you've made um, and what can be done to mitigate for these sorts of errors. So we've assumed that all of the energy supplied is f to the ice is just from the uh, from the, the the heater. But however, obviously it's in a room, so and the room can have uh, could be hot, so it could be transferring energy to the ice. And then also we could yeah, which would cause the the bigger to melt. So another thing we should have really done is um, insulated it. Another thing that we've assumed is that this water is also at zero degrees. So we didn't use a specific capacity equation, but the water could have heated up as well. So to avoid this, one thing is you could insulate. The, um, the ice so there is no external uh, input of energy from the surrounding. Another thing you could do is you can have another control experiment on the side which measures with the empty beaker which measures how much ice is melted on its own from, from, the, from temperature that's absorbed, uh, from energy that's absorbed from the room.